Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic 2015. So we're going to continue on with the campaign today from where we left off. So we are on, still on the first plane of Innistrad, so let's jump in. So I think we're going to have to say something about some kind of vampire there or something like that, but obviously the last one is definitely Avacyn, so what have we got next? We've got Cursed Existence to play through. Now this game seems to be getting a fairly bad rap on all the Steam reviews and stuff at the moment, which is pretty crazy. <clears throat> it's not that bad that some people are making out. I think a lot of people are butthurt about there not being any two-headed giant in this version of the game. Personally, I've never played it, so I don't know how good it is. It could be amazing, it could not be, I'm not sure. But uh, that's one of the main reasons why people don't seem to like it. But enough of the rant over, let's get on with the game. So, within a dank cave, a coven of chanting witches surrounds us, galetal being, glowing with arcane power. You take a tentative step forward all eyes on you. A cursed one, the lich, the lich, lich murmurs, the killer of your kind hunts you. Fair enough. So apparently I'm cursed and I think it's all about Garrick, Garrick coming after me. So what have we got here then? Three lands, good good amount. Nimbus Wings, uh, an enchantment, excellent. Got an act of treason, that's pretty cool as well. And we have an assault griffin, so you know what? That's actually a pretty good starting, starting hand. So what's he made to get down first then? Curse of the Bloody Tome, enchant player. At the beginning of enchanted player's upkeep, that player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That's pretty crazy. Um, oh wow, so the, at the beginning of, each, of enchanted player's upkeep, that player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So why did I have to put mine in there? That's really weird. Why, why did I have to do that? Okay, so am I enchanted? That's weird. So basically I've lost one of my exile cards and a land. That's slightly annoying. So have I been enchanted? I don't know. Um, that's really weird. It's just kind of popped up and I seem to have lost cards. So, uh, so he's played an evolving winds to start off with, which uh, he's popping straight away. So I'm guessing this is it's a blue red deck. Fair enough. I was expecting at least some kind of black in there somewhere. So my turn. Excellent. Got another act. So wow, I've lost uh, one of my Cranko's commands as well. This is not good. So I'm losing cards hand over fist. At least I've got two acts of treason, which is pretty cool. So enchanted creature. Enchant creature gets plus two, plus one, plus two, and has flying. You know what? That's actually pretty cool. I'm actually going to give that straight to my uh, trained Car Caracol, as it's got lifelink as well. So uh, and it's now flyer, which is even better. So I will be swinging in with that. And hit him in the face for two damage, and I will gain two health, which is sweet. Hopefully he has no flying creatures. If that is the case, I will just be doing two damage in the air every turn, and me gaining two life back from it, which is awesome. So he's got another Evolving Winds. Fair enough. So I'm guessing this is going to be some kind of a blue land. Yep. Comes onto the battlefield tapped, as it uh, is a uh, kind of... It's, it's a non-standard land. That's what I'm looking for. So what did I lose this turn? So I lost... Another Assault Griffin, and I also lost a Lightning Talons. That's not good at all. Uh, so what do we get here? Oh, another Nimbus Wings. Very nice. So Act of Treason is useless this turn. I could give that a Nimbus Wings, but not particularly useful. Uh, so I'm just going to hit continue for now. Uh, I'd rather give that to another creature once I can get one in play. Um, so if we attack in with you. Yeah, this is kind of annoying that I've lost two lands and some really good cards, such as my Lightning Talons already. At least I've got this... Uh, creature doing two damage in the air every turn so yeah let's hit continue i want to say like i said i want to save this see if i can get another creature down to do more damage to him but at the moment i'm doing uh damage in the air which he can't block which is fantastic so what's he managed to get down then a sell off occultist when sell off occultist or another creature dies target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her hand fair enough that's pretty crazy so he, so whenever a creature dies, uh, he basically gets to target a player, and that. Oh, at least I got Kiln Fiend down, which is pretty good. So we shall play. Or we'll play the end actually. Um, I could, yeah, I could actually act of treason that one and do extra damage to him, which would be pretty crazy. So uh, let's do that. It's act of treason. You've got two of them, so I may as well. So then we can do four damage this turn. Attack, attack, like so. So I do four damage to him now, get even more life from my lifelink, smack him in the face a bit. That goes back to him, untapped, fair enough. He might be able to do two damage to me, but he is down to 12 health already, which is pretty crazy. So I take two damage, not the end of the world. So there we go, take two damage. Has he got anything else to play this turn? 
Oh, he's got another Revolving Winds to pop, I think. See, so, yeah, I'm just losing loads of my cards. That's crazy. And he's playing another Curse of the... Uh... So, yeah, I, I got targeted straight away. So, I'm losing four cards every turn now. That's mental. So, there goes even more of my land. Do I actually draw something good? Oh, finally, another land. So, what else? So, yeah, I, I basically had to toss away four cards that turn. Anything else good? Um, raise the alarm... Pitch Burn Devils. So yeah, this is not looking particularly good. Although I will be playing the Assault Griffin this turn, I think. So let's get that down now. Before I'm tempted to play anything else. <laughs> so I've somehow managed to still get good cards. Although I've still got a recent amount in my deck. I may be losing four a turn. But uh, I should be able to get him down fairly quickly now. So there goes. So we smacked him again. So we're down to 10 health. I should be doing... So he's dead in the next two turns. Yeah, two turns. So I'll hit him for five next turn. Hit him for five damage a turn after that. And he's dead, basically. So uh, unless he can kill off either of these creatures... Uh, I'm just going to skip blocking. It's not as though two damage is like really going to uh, end the game for me right now. So there we go. So what's he popping? He's just got loads of evolving wind. That's crazy. Another Curse of the Bloody Tome. That's pretty mental. So this deck is all about just kind of like forcing me to discard horrendous amounts of cards. Doesn't really matter. I've still managed to get some very good cards down. So it's another Pit Fiend, a Lone Missionary, anything else. Did however manage to get a uh, Attended Knight down, which is pretty cool. So I will play... Uh, oh, does it doesn't really matter actually. I may as well play that one. Doesn't really matter which one I play right now because I'm he's dead on the next turn anyway. So get an extra blocker down, which is pretty cool. So just swing in with you, swing in with you, hit attack, get the two health back from him. So there we go. So he's down to five. So he's dead next turn unless he can kill off both of these creatures. So we got then Bitter Heart Witch, Death Touch. When Bitter Heart Witch dies, you may search your library for a curse card, put it onto the battlefield, attach to a target player, then shuffle your library. Are these what's called a curse card? Yeah, it's an aura curse, fair enough. So it's a new card. The curse cards weren't in uh, Jewels 2014, so something I've never seen before. I'm currently tossing out six cards a turn, though. So thankfully, I get to kill him off next turn. Otherwise, I'd be pretty boned in a couple of turns. I'm just going to skip blocking. There's not really much point blocking right now, I'll be honest. If I... Um, Kill, killed it off anyway, I'd probably just um, so six cards go to the graveyard, shark a land anything else good, so we get marauding moorhorn so we're just going to hit continue go to my, go to my combat phase swing for five, in the air attack end of the game, unless he's got something that can stop it, like a uh, I don't think there's any kind of like recall Spells for one blue, la blue mana, so excellent. That is a win. So we did pretty well so far. Three wins out of three. I am on the Planeswalker difficulty this time, so I feel as though I'm doing pretty well. Some people have complained this game's too hard, but I've just won the first three games on my first attempt, and I wouldn't actually necessarily say I'm the best player ever. Oh, wow. So we've got a Rakish here. Whenever a vampire you control deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 counter on it. That's pretty cool. I like that. That might go in my deck. And we've also got a Seraph of the Masses, Convoke, Flying. Seraph of the Masses, Power and Toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. That's awesome. That's going in my deck. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put at least the Angel um, at least the angel one in there. Let's just have a quick look at that. So what are we looking for? I'm looking for the Seraph of the Masses. There we go. So I've got a few too many cards now. What can I take out that I've got quite a bit of? Um, let's have a look. So that Seraph of the Masses is going to be good for, um, what's the one I'm looking for? Uh, good with all my ability to summon lots of like weenie creatures such as like Raise the Alarm and what, what's the other one? Um, oh yeah, uh, Krenko's Command, another good one. Oh yeah, there's also the one that allows me to summon three, my other Convoke one. There you go, Triplicate Spirits. It'd be quite good with Triplicate Spirits as well. Uh, what do I want to take out? Let me have a look. Uh, I'll take out one of these Marauding Moorhorns. They're, they're okay, but they have to attack each turn if able. Not most useful. Do I put a Rakish Air in? I haven't got any other Vampires yet, so I don't know. I don't think I do. Um, it's kind of tempting. So saying that. I don't like the Regath and Firecat, so I'm going to put the Rakish Air in instead, as it's just slightly more useful. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, actually, continue building. How... How can I tell how many red and white creatures I've got? I can't... It doesn't really explain it very well, so... Um, I, 
can't really see. So it's, uh, I'm just trying to figure out how many red and white like land I might need. Hmm. Yeah, it's a tough choice. Let me go have a look at lands. I might just balance. I might just balance it out actually. Make sure it's 12, 12 and twelve. There we go. Twelve and twelve. Excellent. I think you will. I will get um, dual lands later on, which would be quite cool. But I uh, don't think I've got any of them yet. So I'm just going to go back into single player. For some reason, it's taken me out of the campaign, which is annoying. Um, Innistrad. So the vampire Sorin Markov has invited you to his home plane of Innistrad to investigate murders of several planeswalkers. Could Garrett be behind this? Okay, so I just hadn't seen anything about the uh, the vampire bit there before. So we're obviously going to take on Feast of Flesh this turn. Delicious, delicious, delicious flesh. Bit of an undead theme going on this first uh, kind of plane, although, like I said, it is quite vampire themed. So, themed. So you come across another of Garak's victims. The strange garb identifies the corpse as a planeswalker. Feral vampires have claimed the remains for their meal, and you, of course, are on the second course. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. Being devoured by tasty vampires. So, um, I kind of like this hand, apart from the fact I've got no creatures I can play early on. So let me draw a new one. That is far better. Actually, that's really good. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to keep that. Hopefully, we can draw into a red land fairly soon, but the fact that I've got three white spells that I can play fairly soon are all really good. So, Enchanted Creature. Whenever Enchanted Creature attacks, put a 1-1 counter on it. Then, if it has three or more 1-1 counters on it, sacrifice Ordeal of Heliod. When you sacrifice Ordeal of Heliod, you gain 10 life. That's pretty cool. So, uh, nothing from the first one. Ah, oh, excellent. We've got Seraph of the Masses down as well. So, uh, when I get seven mana down, if that happens, uh, that'll be pretty terrifying. And it's got Convoke as well, actually, which is even better. So I uh, don't actually necessarily need seven, uh, seven mana. I need three, four, five. Yeah, I, I don't need like the three mana. I've got possibly some of that. So we've got Blood Crazed Neonate. So if Blood, Blood Crazed Neonate attacks each turn if able. Whenever Blood Crazed Neonate deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 counter on it. That's, uh, that's kind of a theme for the uh, vampire things is to... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, nice. So I've also got the Foundry Street Denizen. I can't quite play that yet, but uh, you know what? I'm actually thinking I'm going to play Raise the Alarm this turn, simply because I want the two 1-1 one, one tokens down this turn, which I can then use one of them to take on the Blood Craze Neonate, which is fairly good. So this is a uh, red-black deck. Fair enough. Hopefully we can uh, win this one first time as well. That is, of course, the plan. So... I don't really want to get this one being pumped up, so what we're going to do is block that one, like so. Take it out. So it only gets pumped up if it does combat damage to a player, so it's just going to get sent straight to the graveyard. Excellent. So we've got then Bloodflow Connoisseur. Sacrifice a creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Bloodflow Connoisseur. Fair enough. I don't know if that means it can sacrifice my creatures. I hope not. I'm hoping he can only sacrifice his own creatures, which would be uh, far less terrifying. So... Um, don't really want to play that. Let's play uh, the ordeal, uh, the lone missionary first. So we get some health, which is pretty cool. Could do with the red, la red land, which would be quite good. It's going to skip my attack this turn. No point swinging in. I doubt he's going to... Well, I could have swung in with the 1-1, uh, but I'd rather save it as a blocker for the blood foe connoisseur. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So then if it has... Uh, whenever... So enchant creature. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Then if it has three or more... Yeah, that's pretty cool. So he decided not to do anything that turn, it's fair enough. So what's this then? Sign in blood. Target player draws two cards and loses two life. So I'm guessing he's going to do that to himself. Yeah, it's fair enough. So I could do the red. Red, red. No, not, not going to get a red one this turn. So what have we got then? We've got standing troops or we've got ordeal of blood. Uh, I'm tempted to play Ordeal of Blood and then swing him with the Lone Missionary because he'll get pumped up and I'll deal some pretty sweet damage to it. So, yeah, let's play play you. Pump up my Lone Missionary. Like so. Didn't realise it wasn't 24 health. Oh, yeah, because I gained it from the Lone Missionary, didn't I? So I'm going to swing him with that one because it will get pumped up to a 3-2 first. There we go. So even if he decides to block, it won't get killed, which is uh, which was the reason for pumping up. Well, I could have pumped up either of them, really. But uh, there we go. Got him down to 15. I said, really could do with a red, red land at some point would be quite handy. So I've got there, another blood flow connoisseur. So yeah, lots of very, a very vampire themed deck here. Got my one vampire card, not particularly useful right now. I don't have any red, red mana out. But uh, so I decided not to swing in with either of them. It's fair enough. So excellent. We finally got a mountain down. 
So what do we get down first? Do I get the Foundry Street Denizen or the Rackish Air? Um, I'm thinking Foundry Street Denizen actually this turn because that way it will get pumped up. Ah, actually, I could play the Foundry Street Denizen first and then also play the Standing Troops as well this turn, which would be pretty cool. That would be quite a good blocker. So uh, yeah, let's play you and then we'll also play the Standing Troops this turn as well. Get both of them down. Swinging with my uh, Lone Missionary again because it will get pumped up. So even if he decides to block with both his creatures, it won't matter because that goes up to a 4-3, which is pretty sweet. So I could almost play my Seraph for the masses next turn. So he decided to block that turn. That gets pumped up to a 2-2. Interesting. So he decided to let that... Did he block with that one? Oh, okay. So he blocked with it. Then sacrifice. Ah, I see how that works. So he blocked with it, sacrificed it, but again, because he'd already declared blockers, he then got to pump that up. That's that's pretty clever. I'm I'm quite impressed by that. So I could play Seraph for the masses this turn. Um, so each tap creature. So I've got seven down. So I'd need to tap three creatures. Um, yeah, actually, I might play Seraph of the. So I've got four mana. I need to tap three more so yeah i think i could play that and then also keep my lone lone missionary so one two three confirm play you get you down which is going to be a crazy swinger in the air five five excellent and then also swing with my four three do some damage with that that gets pumped it to a five three that does get sacrificed ah oh, i get to keep the counters excellent i get 10 life and it gets to keep the one one counters that's pretty cool target creature gets plus x zero until end of turn where x is its power Okay, so I will get to kill that one off now. Not the end of the world. So that one gets pumped up to a 4-2. Fair enough, so I kill off his only creature. I do still have a 5-5. Five, five, the swing in the air, which is uh, fairly good. I will be able to pump it up even further with Krenko's command next turn, which is awesome. So it is only a 4-4, four, four, but it will go up to a 6-6 six, six next turn. So we've got here then. Stromic Patrol. Uh, whenever Stromic Patrol deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's not likely to happen, as it is a 4-3. Um, I could just block it. I don't know, actually. It's a tough choice. Uh, no, I will have my... Um, <laughs> I could get my Act of Treat. That might be even better if I get Act of Treason down. Um, yeah, let's let's play that. That could be kind of hilarious. Because he won't have any blockers down. I can swing him with every single one of my creatures here. Uh, actually, let's swing him with you, 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 and you. And keep that to block um, strong. Oh no, that's a vigilance, so I may as well swing in with that as well. And then keep that as a blocker. So let's just attack with all. So I'm going to deal a crazy amount of damage here. He has no land open to stop me. So here we go. Sorry about that, Mehdi. Oh, that was actually down to three health. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. So he's pretty much dead next turn. As I have my 5-5 five, five down, which will be able to swing in the air. So whenever... Oh, I actually I pumped that up a little bit. I did not realise that. Whoopsie daisy. It's only got one one. It's only got one 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 counter on it. So uh, he decided not to swing in, as it wouldn't do anything. But uh, yeah, let's just hit continue. Swing in the air. Um, or do I swing with all? That's tempting. Um, hopefully he doesn't have a doom blade. Be kind of sad for me if he did. Oh, excellent. So he had nothing. Excellent. Four wins out of four. Come on. <laughs> I don't get what people are going on about as being hard. This isn't hard at all. Although I have... Well, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily have had the best draws either. Oh, nice. Charmbreaker Devils. That's pretty good. Might not be particularly useful yet. Mentor of the Meek. Even better. Like, that is going in my deck. And we've also managed to get a black card. So Sanguine Blood. So whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Could be could be useful later on if I splash any black into my deck. But, uh, but yeah. Excellent. So the uh, the last um, last encounter will be Avacyn, but uh, we are now running over. We are that's probably enough for today. We've been recording for twenty minutes, so so yeah, pretty successful start to this um, this campaign. So four wins out of four. Heard Avacyn can be a bit of a pain, but hopefully won't be too bad. Uh, fingers crossed. So yeah, go leave the episode there for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. But apart from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.